So what we're doing is we're making a machinist jack. I need to make two of them. And so this is the barrel of the jack. This is the jack screw head, whatever you call it. And then that is a locking nut. And I've already got one made. And I, I knurled it. And I'm using uh, 5 8 24 extra fine thread on that. So I'm set up in the lathe. I've already marked my two and a half inches right on there. And then I've got my other mark you can barely see there which marks a uh, quarter inch and I've got another mark for where to put the parting tool because I'm going to put a bevel on the end of that and then I've got my indicator set up for a stop once I get to zero then I know where to stop and I'll be taking uh, 100,000 cuts at a time. One thing I forgot to do, I cut the last one like this, and on this one, uh, I wanted to put the tailstock support in. I forgot to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now, and then bring you back when I'm ready for the next cut. I went ahead and finished the cut. It's a hundred thousandths cut. Made some nice blue chips. That's what uh, that's what these cutters like. They like at least that much of a cut. Anything less than that, it seems to bird nest. But um, that's some good chips right there. All right, so I got that set up and we're ready to do our next hundred thousandths. It's a little shaky, I don't have my normal camera set up going. I just don't have time. That's why I haven't been videoing a lot of this stuff because I'm trying to get this shop opened up. Yeah, that support really helps a lot because it was chattering before and now the chatter has stopped. Some nice blue chips coming off there. I've taken more. I've taken 120 thousandths, but I think 100 thousandths is what I need to do right now. So I had to, 
I had to undo that for a couple of reasons. One, it's getting hot. And I, I guess I need a a live uh, bearing live center, whatever the heck it's called. That one's just getting for really toasty. Started changing the color of the metal. And then I can't really get that tool. This is going to get in the way of the tool, and I got a whole bunch more cuts to make, so I'm going to have to just deal with it the way it is. I'll probably just go ahead and push that in a little bit into the chuck so it has a little more support that way at least. Then we'll uh, continue on. I got to get that down to uh, 0 0.625 in order to thread that at 5 8 yeah, so this is really hot. I'm going to have to let that cool off before I go any further. I don't know what the deal is. I've I've used one of these many, 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 many times, and I've never, ever, ever, ever had that issue before. And you can see the heat soak getting into the, into that even. Well, it's already cooling off because it's got that to draw. This thing is pretty hot. And the tool's getting hot too. So I'm just going to let that cool down for probably the next 20 minutes and then I'll go ahead and come back to it. Well, we're back in business. It's cooled off. It's still a little warm, but it's good enough to go. I moved it back. So that'll give it the support I need. Um, I already did one of these, so I did it without the tailstock. It's just that this will chatter a little bit. So anyway, we'll get the get this going. So you kind of hear it chattering very mild So the smaller that diameter gets, the more difficult it gets to cut, and the more it wants to chatter. That's why I wanted to put the center rest, but at this point I don't even think I'd have enough clearance. So I don't really have much choice but to do it this way. But this is the last cut at a hundred thousandths, and then, um, then after that uh, I'm going to do a fifty thousandths cut, and then see where I'm at after that. hear that chatter a lot more.
so the next cut's going to be 50 thousandths. So we're ready to thread. I chamfered this end and I chamfered that lightly. Break that edge off there. Then after this is threaded, then we'll start our cut. We'll cut into that a little bit. And then there'll be a chamfer between those two lines. And then I'm going to uh, knurl that. And then we'll part the thing, the, the thing off and we'll be done. So I have my threading die set up. You see I'm kind of supporting it with that to get it started so it's square. Uh, unfortunately my lathe doesn't have any change gears and even if I did I couldn't do this fine of a thread on this lathe anyway. I don't think any lathe could. Maybe I'm wrong but um, so this has to be done with the die. So I'm going to get that started. I'll have to put the phone down and then we'll uh, we'll get to it. So I brought the uh, tailstock back. I'm going at a real low RPM. Gonna got the knurler set up. We're gonna knurl that. Then we're gonna part it off, and we'll be done. So here I'm working on the two um, locking nuts and I've already measured each one's a quarter inch. So I'm just putting the knurl on it. I haven't threaded it yet because I don't know if it's a good idea to thread it yet because uh, back here this is going to be this is going to be one of the first uh, barrels for the jack and I have to drill more and I, I don't want to put threads in there if I'm going to have to run a drill through there so I'm probably going to end up just cutting these off they're ready to be threaded but I'm probably going to thread them after I cut them off which has me a little concerned um, Yes, yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but that's uh, that's where I'm at right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I measured from there to there, and I marked it on the tap so I can run that in that far, and I'll stop right here so this one on this end won't be completely tapped but it'll be mostly tapped and that'll save me from going into there because I gotta drill more and then um, that'll I think that'll solve the problem so I've started on the barrels and I'm gonna be two and a half inches on that line and then down here you can see I made I relieved some of the bottom there so that this will sit flat on whatever surface and now I'm drilling it out and drill it all the way through and then um, this is the bottom end this is going to be the top 
and then once I drill it through I'm actually going to open this bottom up some more and drill in a little bit because uh, I'm only going to drill an inch or tap an inch and a half in and I don't want to go I don't want to tap any more than that uh, you know the tap just isn't long enough and I don't want to break the tap off in there either because after a certain amount of threads it gets really really touchy so yep this is uh, number one hopefully I'll have enough material for two so now I'm gonna drill that far in to open that up so when I tap this way um, once I pass that'll be an inch and a half this way and then it will be opened up from there so the the tap will not have to keep there'll be a, a opening whatever so I'm not gonna try and film this it's too hard to hold this and do it at the same time so there it is drilled out you can see that's where the threads will end and that'll give me an inch and a half worth of threads and again this is the bottom so all that's left on this is to go ahead and part it off and then um, I'll rechuck it up tap it and then I'm going to put a knurl up here and then that one will be done so I got it threaded got it chamfered in there and out here and it's uh, threading up really nice it's nice and nice and snug there and I'll probably run the tap one more time it's a little tight there a really good fit yeah so that, that came out really good just gonna run the tap through there one more time just to loosen that end up yep Chinese taps and dies you totally cannot depend on them so I had to run the, the die over this a few times this was fine but the die going over this wasn't so I'm gonna replace those I'm gonna to go to uh, the supplier that I know and see if he can get some uh, American made ones but otherwise this is working I'm gonna put the neural on it and then this one's gonna be done I mean yeah it's it's good now so Now one of the things is that I didn't want that kind of play in it, but you know it doesn't matter because once it's locked up, it's pretty. It doesn't move, so it's good. It's got a good fit there. So yeah, just put the neural on it. That one's done. So there's the completed machinist jack. Um, like I said, the uh, the dies were not that great but I got it working it's doing what it's supposed to see I got my little relief there so that it sits flat and you can see the bolt poking through there Kind of hard to do one-handed i've been doing filming all this on my phone i should have been using the, the normal camera but i just am kind of short on time that just locks and then you're you're all set and you're supporting your work so yeah that's it 
So got knurling there to grip the barrel. We got knurling there, knurling there. So I got good positive grip everywhere. There it is. So there they are after much fuss and heartache. The second one was really binding up and I chased the threads again and again and again and again. And I have no idea why it was binding up. I couldn't get it past a certain point and it bound up so bad I had to get uh, some channel locks to get it to come undone. Um, you know, I, I measured it, the measurements were good, uh, I rechased the threads. Uh, I don't know. I mean, um, I'm still kind of baffled. I even I checked the straightness against a square edge of the of this uh, jack, whatever you call it, uh, and it was for the most part straight. Um, but I, I took this to my belt sander and just very lightly went over the the threads. And uh, then I chased them again, and then you know it worked. But it, as as it got to a certain point, it seems like there. As I turn it, there was a sticking point, and then it would break free of that sticking point, and then it would come to another sticking point, and then it would break free past that sticking point. I, I'm really, I still have no idea why, but it's working now. It'll loosen up over time. Um, you know, this was a learning experience, and I, I made a few mistakes, but um, these will work just fine. This is why I had to make these, because I need to flatten this, and you know, when this cutter head is going over this, this thing's going to want to do this. And so, you know, I could have bought some machinist jacks, but I... I needed the tooling, you know, I wanted to get the knurler, I needed the knurler, you know, so I went ahead and bought that, and um, I needed a few other tools uh, to do this, which I got, so I've got the tooling, and you know, it's a new shop, and I, I need to build tooling up, so if I can make the tool, and I need the tooling, I'll buy the tooling, and I'll make the tool, because I need the tooling. So this, even though I had problems, it was a learning experience. And, um, you know, one, one of the things, the head on this is thicker. And I was going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, the night that I was working on this, it was late. It was like around 9.30 at night. And I, don't, I was cutting the edge. There's, you know, a slight bevel on the top here. And I just simply didn't measure it. And, you know, mostly it was because I was tired, uh, you know, and when you're, I, I, it's like I want to drive through and get, get it done. I don't want to wait till the next day. And I should have just stopped, gone to bed and come back when I was fresh. So that was an avoidable mistake. Otherwise, um, everything came out pretty good. They're pretty similar. They're pretty identical. And, um, I mean, just because it's a little thick, it's still going to work just fine. I know that it's not right, and I'll be making more of these down the road. I'm going to make some shorties, some machinist jacks that are maybe this high. And, um, you know, what I learned from these will be applied to those, and um, I'll make a video of that, and I won't do it over my phone like I did this one. I just really did not have the time to set the camera up and get all that stuff set up and and then you know the cameras in my way and all that stuff I just don't have time right now uh, I got to get this shop up and running and that's my main priority right now so uh, you know in any case there they are I'll have them for many years to come as soon as I get my forge set up, I'm going to go ahead and heat treat these and harden them. And um, I'm going to also uh, mark these with my name and a date. I don't know where I'm going to do that. I was thinking on maybe underneath here, you know, putting the marks underneath there where they won't be 
too easily noticeable, but otherwise this works pretty good. You know, I got the, the knurling works, the, uh, yeah, I've already got them locked down. So yeah, they, they lock, which is what I wanted. They lock really good. So yeah, that knurling really, really is the, the deal there. But um, yeah, there they are. Very simple, very basic, and um, very functional. And these will these will last years to come, hopefully. I am going to get a new tap and die. Uh, I'm not really happy with how those performed. You know, they're Chinese. I, I bought them because there was a lot of good reviews. But then again, you know, when you think about it, the reviews weren't coming from machinists. They were coming from people that were working on a project. And, you know, it's like, I, I'm going to go to my supplier and I'm going to take the tap and die. And I'm going to see if uh, they can get me an American made version. And then um, I, the next jacks will be the same 5 8 uh, 24 thread it's the extra fine the the United Standard extra fine uh, which is what I, I want to use on this it's just better for these I believe and um, then you know the next set that I make I'll, I'll film and we'll we'll see how those turn out and we'll see if I have the same type of problems that I did with these